Hey, this is CND Channel. I'm Chris. This is Joe, and that's uh, this is MMA for you. We're going to be doing our UFC 167 post fight analysis. Uh, do you got any uh, one you want to sponsor or give a shout out to? Uh, shout out to John Lober, Born to Fight Kimonos, Storm Kimonos, and uh, if you ever need anything, Born to Fight Kimonos Headquarters HQ at Facebook.com. And uh, what do you call this? We'll be glad to hook you up with anything. Nice, man, nice. Yeah, a lot of uh, things to talk about here, you know, GSP oh, yeah. versus Hendrix, yeah. Uh, my picks are really good. I got 11 out of 12 correct. Uh, the only one I missed was Robbie Lawler versus Roy McDonald. Um, the fights, all of them were actually pretty good. I don't really think any, th any of them were real stinkers, per se. Um, you, you saw all five of the main card fights, right? Yeah, they were all action fight. Um, all I I remember uh, Rashad, Rashad yeah. fighting a uh, Sonnen. That yeah. was a good fight. Um, yeah. Rory McDonald Lawler. Uh, mm -hmm. I really thought McDonald had that fight, but uh, you know Robbie brought it. Robbie Lawler brought it. Um, mm -hmm. main event. What can you say about the main event? Let's get right to it then, man. George St. Pierre defeated Johnny Hendricks by split decision. 48-47, two times for him. What do you think of the decision? I mean, what do you think of the fight, man? It was a very good fight. I've never seen GSP get dominated or for GSP. He didn't have uh, as much answers as he does with his other fights. Yeah. Uh, I really think uh, Hendricks got robbed. But mm -hmm. again, uh, you know, sometimes if you don't, beat the champion it goes against what it oh it could go against you so what yeah. else? but i do think um hendrix put did win that fight and he did put up a good fight yeah i thought hendrix ran one round one two and four i thought gsp got rounds three and five definitely um i thought hendrix won as well uh you know well, for one thing uh hendrix you know was landing the cleaner shot no uh, the more damaging shots. I, I, you know, I don't know if it's TriStar guys per se, but you know, George St. Pierre and Robbie Warren McDonald actually train in TriStar, and I kind of see the problem with their style to MMA. It's more. It does it seem more point fighting? Yeah, it does. It does seem like like they're scoring points. They're being a little bit more. Um careful you know they're not really throwing it all out there yeah but uh what do you call this yeah it's just um a different style they didn't really go all out you know yeah and and both cases they were split decisions that could have gone either way i kind of have to wonder if that style of fighting is a detriment to to them because now they're not like when i watch roy mcdonald versus robbie lawler at no point in the fight did i really think like Wow, McDonald's going to finish this fight, especially in the stand-up. Definitely. I thought he was going to win points in the stand-up. And same with GSP. I was like, man, you're not doing much. Maybe a right hand here and there. Maybe a head kick. That makes me feel you're going to finish Johnny Hendricks. But Johnny Hendricks was throwing that left, connecting. Yeah. I, there, there were times I thought that Johnny Hendricks would could finish the fight. He looked like he was trying to finish the fight, whereas George St. Pierre was trying to win a decision. Is that fair to say? Yeah, Johnny Hendricks, um, he definitely had more oomph, you know, just uh, what he calls more punching power, looked mm -hmm. much better. First round to fifth round, definitely he was throwing the harder shots, you know. The wrestling was amazing, you know. The, oh, yeah. Wow. Just, uh, you know, I've never seen GSP actually, what do you call this, be put down you know be stopped in that division and yeah. i mean in that type of in the game the wrestling game man hendrix is taking on defense and that guy's strength man he goes up against a cage i mean he had okay. like it looks like he'd like muscle his way out of that and, and put johnny or, or george st pierre's back against a cage oh. you know i mean he you can tell he's a really strong guy man he was noticeably angry at the post fight analysis oh. and now you know, you gotta wonder about the post fight not, or post fight interview that uh, Rogan gave to George St. Pierre. I mean, yeah, is he retired? I mean, is GSP retired? What do you think? Probably taking a step back from everything, like he said. But um, mm -hmm. I do want to see that rematch. You know, G uh, John Johnny, right? Johnny Hendricks. Yeah, Johnny Hendricks. Yeah, you know, he definitely deserves a rematch. Um, you yeah. know, all hands down to GSP. He's been dominating for a long time. Mm -hmm. Big fan of GSP. I was actually. 
going more on you know I was actually thinking GSP would more be more dominant or catch him in something in the later rounds the fourth and fifth round mm -hmm. but uh hands down to johnny hendrix you know he stopped gsp's game plan and what do you call this hopefully uh gsp would come back and uh it's not the end for gsp what do you i i don't know uh, uh if you've been following all the other champions as of late but if you saw like john Jones fight alexander gustafson very close fight they're not super dominant Chris Weinman knocks out Anderson Silva. Yeah. Whew. This fight, you know, you're not seeing that ultra dominant guy. Even Jose Aldo didn't look, hasn't been looking super dominant. Are we seeing these young guys kind of stepping up now, beating these like once dominant uh, champions? I mean, is that what's going on or what? Yeah, it could be. You know, the these cha are the champions like GSP. Mm -hmm. They've been, you know, he, he's been there forever and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it might be taking a wear and tear, a little bit of passing of the guard. Really exciting yeah. to see all these changes in MMA and, you know, it's not like uh, this is the 20th anniversary. It's not like 20 years ago, Hoy steps in, mm -hmm. you know, they knew one art. Nobody knew jujitsu at that time and dominates. Yeah. But uh, now it's uh, young guys are coming up. People are more informed. You know, they know what's going on. They know what guard, mount, you know, um, yeah. passing even the clinch game now. And mm -hmm. it's really, uh, these young fighters are definitely stepping up. Very, very exciting. Yeah, man. So, it, it's really interesting. Uh, GSP, I, I think he's going to take a, I don't know if he's retired. I think he's what's called taking a sabbatical. Yeah. That, I think that's what it's called, right? Taking a time out, maybe miss the sport a little bit. And yeah. Get take some a fire year, back. Yeah, take a year off. Um... I'm going to say this too. As much as George St. Beer is getting these great trainers and this great training, I think he's kind of hit a ceiling. I mean, I think what we see of George St. Pierre has kind of been what we've been seeing from George St. Pierre for a while. Definitely. You know, people, you know? people know, know his moves. Yeah. He's been out there for a while. He's been on TV all the time. And, you know, these yeah. young guys or the up and coming challengers yeah. have studied him really well. And,. You know, sometimes it just gets to a point where fighters plateau and they have to find a different way to win because yeah. you know, you know, people know their game too well. But again, yeah. you know, hands down, still, yeah. he's uh, you know, greatest fall time right now. You know, and um, yeah. hopefully, I, we hope he comes back. I hope he comes back. Uh, you know, Gustafson didn't get the immediate rematch against Jones, and if GSP is taking a sabbatical, the only thing that makes sense would be an interim title. Johnny Hendricks, Robbie Lawler, I think is the one that makes the most sense. I look good. Because um, those are big wins. Um, yeah, I, I actually can't think of anyone else, too. <laughs> like Johnny Hendricks, Robbie Lawler would be my pick for, like, um, interim champion. Maybe the winner of Carlos Condit, Matt Brown, fights Johnny Hendricks or something. That would be good. For the interim title. But Hendricks versus Lawler, to be honest, is w what I'd want to see. They definitely, both of them definitely look good and uh, both hard hitters. Uh, good matchup. Yeah. You know? It's a good matchup for sure. Um, yeah, but, you know, an immediate rematch would be cool. I thought John Hendricks won. I was really surprised. Same here. Yeah. I was somewhat surprised. I thought George St. Pierre would just land a jab a lot, but uh, didn't happen. Um, yeah, Johnny Hendricks just, he, he knew what was going on, man. Yeah, definitely stopped George's game plan. You know what George yeah. was thinking? It went the other way. George didn't have the head movement. And he oh, yeah. He wanted no, to no. shoot, you know? Like, uh, yeah. he knew George would try to shoot in, and he was just waiting for him, that uppercut, you know? Yeah, or the knee, you know? Yeah. Yeah, those, those knees came close. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, next round after that, and the co-main, Rashad Evans beat Chael Sonnen by TKO in the first round. Good fight. Good, Good fight. fight, yeah. Uh, expected or unexpected for you? Uh, it's really unexpected. Uh, I didn't think Chael would go away in the first round like that. You know, he's been pretty dominant. He looked good against uh, that Shogun fight. You know, he threw that guillotine up. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, just uh, really, I'm, I'm in awe. I couldn't believe it was a first round. I th I would think at least it'd go to second second or third round. I got, Yeah, I also kind of thought that the way the fight was going, especially when they're jockeying for position against a cage... I kind of thought that would be a lot of the fight. I thought it'd go for around, like to uh, the whole fifteen. Uh, really surprised that once. One thing I liked about Evans is that once he took him down and was in half guard, Chill was trying to posture, um, to post, uh, and, and get back to on his butt, and eventually it looks like back onto his knees. 
Evans would just push him down. Like, he'd see it and get him down. You know what I mean? It was really good top control. When he took his back, he flattened him out. Chill was more, more or less, he, he looked like he was coming with his head, and if you look at his legs, they were, like, <laughs> flailing. It was like he's swimming or something. Yeah, it's like he's tapping with his feet. You know what I mean? Uh, to the strikes. You got hurt there. You know, I, I got surprised. Uh, I think uh, the Evan got his back right, then the yeah. mount. And uh, from there, the mount got the back and yeah. just pounded him out. Really yeah. unexpected. I thought Chael would have a few more answers for that. Yeah, exactly. Actually, I actually thought he would uh, Scramble. get, the, yeah, and get yeah. the single leg off, off his half guard. Yeah, but, exactly. Uh, you know, Rashad hands down to him. He what do you call this? He stuffed that. You know, trying to get that single. And good mm -hmm. fight. You know. Yeah, good one. This is a, leaves both guys in a very well. Not sunning. We know what happens with Sun in here. Win or lose, he fights Vanderlei Silva. He's the opposing coach on the Ultimate Fighter Brazil three against Vanderlei Silva, and I, they're supposed to fight each other. Oof. Rashad. Can't wait to see that one. Yeah. <laughs> Rashad Evans though. Weird position. He's coming off a good, a solid two fight win streak over Dan Henderson and Hill Sonnen, two top ten guys. But I don't think there's a desire for many people to see Evans fight John Jones. That's true. So unless Evan, unless like Gustafson or Glover Teixeira beats John Jones or something, I think that Rashad Evans is in limbo in the division right now. Um, he looked good. He looked really good, actually. I, I was actually very impressed with what I saw. Um, Might need to climb the ladder a little bit more, you know? Maybe, uh... Yeah, but... Fight Gustafsson? Yeah, yeah. Gus, no, that's the only guy that makes sense. I mean, well, Gustafsson versus... It's the, the winner of Manoa versus Gustafsson fights Rashad Evans. Because, honestly, he's already fought Phil Davis... And uh, he lost a little. No, he lost to Nogueira. Uh, I, w I don't want to see him fight Shogun. Yeah, so this, the the light heavy division is super thin right now. I mean, it's just really bad. Um, yeah, I, I guess he fights the winner of Gustafsson Manuel next because the division is just so thin. I I don't know who else he can fight. <laughs> Hopefully there's some new talent out there coming up too, you know? There isn't. <laughs> That's a sad thing. <laughs> there's like three guys in Bellator, and there's like some really not so great prospects in the UFC, you know? I mean. We have yet to see. Ooh. We have to see how it goes. It's not the greatest division right now, but yeah, we'll see what happens. Nah, man. Tito, need to heal. Rampage versus Tito. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. <laughs> Well, next one right after that, uh, Roy McDonald beat Roy, uh, Robbie Lawler beat Roy McDonald by split decision. Um, there was something we were talking about in this fight. Round three, Roy McDonald four minutes in uh, on the four minute mark got a takedown. Five or ten seconds later, Mario Yamasaki stands a fight up. Okay, Robbie Lawler then. Puts fist to face. Now, <laughs> if this, if the referee didn't stand up the fight so quickly, does Robbie Lawler get such a dominant third round? Yeah, that could, you know, that is possible, you know. Um, I think mm. he should have given him a little bit more time on the ground. They mm. were both being active, you know, not as active because, uh, you know, they just got there. Yeah, they just got there, yeah. But uh, the, the referee didn't even give them. 13 seconds or, you know, 15 seconds, and it was right up. I think uh, that was, um, you know, a missed stoppage. You know, Mario shouldn't have stood him up that, you know, that time. Yeah. But, uh, again, you know, hopefully they, what do you call this, they can fix that in the yeah. future. And now, going back to what we mentioned here, I mean, you, you look at the game plan here for Roy McDonald, and the stand-up, it was more point-fighting. I mean, there were, I didn't. I just didn't see any strikes in his stand-up that made me think, dude, he's looking for the fit. Man, that right hand. If that right hand connects, Lawler's done. Or if that head kick connects, he's done. Or if that knee connects, he's. You don't yeah. see that with Roy McDonald. He, he looked like uh, he wanted to counterpunch. You know, he knew. I, I felt yeah. like he knew that 
Lar, you know, he, he's always got the, he's always got that one punch knockout power, uh -huh. and uh, I think McDonald was trying to, you know, he was he was aware of that, and he tried to back up and try to counter punch, you know, like a Chuck Liddell style. Yeah, but, um, but it, just, it, did, it didn't do too well for him. The, well, the problem with the Chuck Liddell when when Liddell counter punch, he threw an over and right. When Rory counter punch, he threw a jab. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it was just it was a lot different. Um, Good win for Lawler, man. You know, this is actually a three-fight win streak in the UFC. Two of them are by finishes. Roy McDonald's one of the top welterweights in the world. I think Lawler could get a title shot, actually, after this. Uh, hey, it come back for him. Yeah, great comeback. And he's looked good. His takedown defense is solid. And his stand-up's good. He's not brawling as much. He's still patient. Uh, he's a little more patient now. Oh, he's kicking a little bit more. Yeah, you know? he's kicking a little more. Uh, I, I just I like what I see from him, you know. Um, maybe a uh, Nick Diaz Robbie Lawler uh, rematch. <laughs> yeah, Diaz is like retired though, so yeah, I don't know. Um, it'd be cool though. I'd like to see it. Um, if not, Robbie Lawler versus Carlos Condit or Matt Brown would be kind of cool. Um, Roy McDonald. Same guys, I guess. He gets a loser of Matt Brown, uh, Carlos Condit. Um, but yeah, uh, good win for Lawler and just one of those resurgence that is that, as far as we can tell, is not due to TRT. <laughs> okay. Uh, Steroids, yes. Yeah. Next one after that, Tyron Woodley beat Josh Koscheck by KO in the first round. Good fight. Good fight. Knockout of the night? What do you think? Yes, definitely. Uh, you know, yeah. um, can never count Koscheck out. He's always a wild card. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, Tyrone was oof, he was you know he was what he calls he came ready and uh, you know just threw the bombs. Yeah, actually, um, as far as I can tell, Woodley was a only real straight KO. Evans was a TKO and John Volante. I mean, that was pretty much a knockout, but that was considered a TKO as well. Um, I didn't notice this, but uh, John Cerrone is the only guy that got a submission. My guess is that Woodley gets K of the night and Cerrone gets uh, submission of the night. That's the way it looks like. Especially since uh, Cerrone is the only guy who got uh, a submission finish. And it was a sweet submission, too, anyways. Triangle choke. Uh, yeah, it's a really nice triangle choke. Um... Tyron Woodley, man. Uh, lots of power. He stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with Koscheck. Koscheck, man. Three-fight losing streak. Oh, man. Right now. He's been knocked out twice by Robbie Lawler and Woodley in that losing streak. Man, uh, I think Koscheck might be cut from the UFC. Uh-oh. Here we go. <laughs> he does have the fact that he does have a name. And he is from uh, the first Ultimate Fighter. Might see him in Bellator. <clears throat> might see him in Bellator, though. Might see him in World Series of Fighting with his buddy John Fitch. Whoopi, though, I mean, man, when he looks good, he looks good, man. When he looks bad, I mean, he lost against Jake Shields. He looks really bad. <laughs> so... Hopefully we see more of this Tyron Woodley. He looks a little more confident in the stand-up. He took some hits from Josh Kodachek and gave some back. Sometimes Woodley looks unconfident on the feet. This time he looked very confident on feet. That's what I want to see from him. That's what many wanted to see from Tyron Woodley. Next fight for him. Um, maybe Hector Lombard even. Give him someone kind of high. I, I'm going to be honest. Give him someone kind of high up there. He, he's a prospect. you know, and He's a strong prospect. Dong Young Kim, not a bad fight either. Yeah, test him a little bit. Yeah, you know? te yeah, test this guy a little bit. You know, I, I think he's good enough. I really do. Next round after that, in the flyweight division, Ali Baga Utina beat Tim Elliott by unanimous decision. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I am. I, this is actually one of the picks I am like kind of the most proud of. Um. I, I think, I don't know who was the favorite, but I know a lot of people picked Elliot to win, and uh, I liked, I've, I've always liked, you know, the, the thing is, with Ali Bagatunov is he has a Samba background, and he's from Dagestan, 
When I think Sabo, I think Fedor. You know what I mean? And he's not Fedor or anything, but like you can tell with these like Eastern European, Russian, Dagestani fighters, they're super aggressive. They got like heart for days. They don't seem to give up. I mean, there was a tight guillotine attempt that Elliot gave to Bagu Tunov. Um, man, I, I just I really liked what I saw. He has fast hands. Good counter punching, uh, good wrestling. I just overall, I liked what I saw. The thing with Elliot, I mean, the guy's just not technical, you know. He, but he makes up for it by being aggressive and being in the guy's face all the time. But he, it's a harder to do against a Sabu guy that's really com that has that type of composure, you know. Um, you can't, you know, you hold this frenetic pace, but this other guy's all calm and collected and, and more technically savvy. Baga Yutunov won the fight. I think he should fight maybe a John Dodson, uh, to be honest with you. That would be a good fight, yeah. Something pretty high up there. Maybe uh, Scotty Jorgensen and or um, Ian McCall. Um, Tim Elliott. Actually, I'd like to see Tim Elliott fight Ian McCall as well. Um... He's coming off a loss. Uh, maybe by Gary Tuna versus uh, John Lineker also. And maybe Tim Elliott. You know, there, there's guys he can fight. The division's not very big. Okay, next one after that. Donald Cerrone beat Evan Dunham by triangle choke in the second round. Uh, good fight. Cerrone knocked down uh, Evan Dunham early. Evan Dunham is a notorious slow starter. So, same as Cerrone. Uh... You know, it's funny, Donald Trump is a big 155er, and he actually is supposed to, he said he's going to actually cut down to 145, maybe get Aldo after this. He's big for the weight class, man. I am really surprised about that. Give that division a run for their money. He looked good. If he looks like he does here, where his stand-up is on point, and his ground game's on point, and not just totally lost sometimes... Sometimes are fighting stupid. He he can he's definitely top ten material. Is he a title contender? Maybe you know. Could he beat Ricardo Lamas? Maybe. Can he beat Dustin Barrier? Yeah, I think he could. Uh, Evan Dunham at this point, you know, kind of sucks. I like the guy. He is like a high level gatekeeper at this point too. Uh, at this point, you know. Um, he, 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 he can't beat a certain level of competition. Um, I think Dunham should just fight... Jeez, uh, who, who's out there? Um, guy coming off a loss. Uh, Hoy Masvidal versus Evan Dunham would be kind of cool. And Cerrone, uh, if he goes to 145, maybe the winner of like Elkins versus Jeremy Stevens. Uh, he beat Jeremy Stevens. Uh, well, so the 145 that he could fight. Dustin Poirier, I think, would be good. Cub Swanson's there, but they train together. Um, Korean Zombie. Korean Zombie, that would be a good fight. That would be pretty cool. Uh, Eric Koch. Frank uh, Edgar, did he, did he move down, or he's still Yeah, there? but he's fighting uh, BJ. Uh, but that would be pretty cool, actually. Frank Edgar, Don Sorrell, would be pretty cool, too. Um, so there's a lot of fights for him at 145. I just don't know if he'll look good at 145 either, man. For all you know, he's going to look like Skeletor, you know? The cuts are tough, you know? Oof. Yeah. You can't be eating those, uh, that... I think he eats milk duds a lot and stuff like that. You can't be <laughs> eating those no more. Oh, man. Oof. Okay, next one after that, Talos Latis beat Ed Herman by a unanimous decision. Uh, good one for Latis. He's just doing one to UFC... Herman's not a walk in the park, definitely. Yeah, you know, I say this about Ed Herman all the time. I mean, the guy is, like, the most, like, he is this guy that has been, ever since he, like, started in the UFC, he's been stuck in, like, mid-tier purgatory. I mean, he just cannot seem to get past mid-level. I mean, he's just definition gatekeeper definition just mid-level guy you know good striker not a great striker he got dropped by ladies good on the ground but not great on the ground good wrestler but not a great wrestler you know he's like but tough you know really tough uh he, he defines like uh gatekeeper really well 
Um, Laetis, I don't know what to make of him because he kind of takes fights to the ground, uses his severe jitsu to win the fight, takes a back a lot of times. Um, he's done that to Tom Watson and now to Ed Herman. I don't know if he'll be able to implement that game plan against a lot of fighters. His stand-up's getting a lot better. Uh, who you should fight next, though? Brad Tavares would be a good one. Um, Luke Barnett. Um, let's see. Uh, maybe even uh, Francis Carmon. <laughs> I think that might be pretty interesting. Ed Herman, just lower, more lower to mid-tier guys at the division. Next round is that. Rick Story beat Brian Abersall by unanimous decision. Good one for Rick Story. Um, hit some good leg kicks on the guy with the hero. Abersall, uh, I think he's on a losing streak. Uh, he needs to get a good win over a, like a lower to mid-tier guy. Or else he'll probably get cut. If not, he might even get cut it, you know, after this. Who knows? Two-fight losing streak. And Never know. And it's un unmerciful if you're not winning, um, you know. Yeah. It's up to Dana. Exactly. Rick Story, man, uh, you know, I think he's still what uh, I think he's still prospect status. He does I mean, he loses fights that he probably shouldn't be losing now. Against like Mike Pyle, for example. Um but he, he has shown some improvement. I like his leg kicks. His overall aggression's good. Big for the weight class. Um, good wrestler himself. Really physical guy. You know, that's who he should fight next. I kind of like Dong Hyun Kim next. Um, let's see. Maybe maybe Jake Shields even. But I think that'd be a boring fight. <laughs> Story versus Woodley actually wouldn't be too bad. Um, but yeah, there's, there's good fights for Rick Story. Nice shot after that. Eric Perez beat Edwin Figueroa by unanimous decision. Figueroa is probably going to get cut from the UFC. I think this is like third loss in a row now or something like that. Eric Perez, he is the only fighter in the UFC that is Mexican born from Mexico. Oh. Um, yeah, I know that the UFC wants to make inroads with him. Um. And that's fine. He, he's a good fighter. He's still young. He's only like 23, 24. Kind of a brawler. He has a good ground game. Trains at Jackson's. I like what I see from him. He's just probably more lower to major guys at the division. Kind of face Rick Prelims. Jason High beat Anthony Lapsley by unanimous decision. Uh, so the fight was Jason High's wrestling and grappling. Man, I thought he got a 10-8 round in that first round, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, this is something that happens in Jiu-Jitsu a lot. Jason High was actually going... His favorite move is a guillotine. So he goes... In this fight, I know I don't think he saw the fight. No, I, don't, I didn't get to see that one. He keeps going for the guillotine. Seems tight. Lapsley gets out of it. Now Lapsley's on top. Oh, boy. <laughs> the, you, know, the, you know, it's a thing with guillotines. You know what I mean? It, it's just one of those things, especially in MMA... You can choose. You can commit to the position. You can commit to the to the choke. But then, uh, you know, if uh, you commit too much, you could end up in a bad position. Exactly. Happened in this fight. Jason and I almost almost gave the fight away. That guillotine though, that uh, GSP tried was pretty good though. You know, he, yeah. he got it. Uh, he got it. Then uh, he flipped the guy over, and he almost looked like he had the mount. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I, I, there's some little things that I see uh, jujitsu wise from GSP. It looked pretty cool. Uh, also, uh, I saw seeing Roy McDonald utilize X guard. Yeah, that was kind of cool. What was that all about? That was awesome. That was a gutsy move. You yeah, know? gutsy move. Yeah. Robbie Lawler uh, utilizes butterfly guard all the time yeah, that was too. Good. That's pretty cool too. So it's nice to see uh, different types of guard because actually, as much as the evolution of MMA has been, you know, just really high hot you know like it's evolving at a rapid rate the guard in mma is actually still pretty basic i mean it, it's really like closed guard or open guard you know what i mean it's it's there's not much a lot of people don't know how to utilize the guard so much so you see most people have a defensive guard yeah they just okay. hold the guy or something you know and uh you know like we were talking about earlier people are you know um how do you say this gsp could have had an arm bar tech uh, attempt yeah. on hendrix but you know people don't choose to do that because a lot of fear you know you could 
have the arm, but they could stack you and you know just rain down punches. It's you know it could get risky for the person trying the arm bar, yeah. but uh, you know uh, only a lot of high level jujitsu practitioners can probably do that in MMA. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. But I, I would like to see more of it. I mean, there's always a uh, there's always a um, there's a risk, but I, I definitely like to see a more stronger guard games from a lot of fighters. I, you know what it is? You know you know what it is, do you? If you're on your back in MMA, you lose losing the fight. You're losing the fight. So it's like it's so instead of learning to work a better offensive guard game, fighters are learning how to either hold a guy or how to get back to their feet. True. But they're not learning how to utilize X guard. They're not utilizing all this other, you know, other stuff. They're not getting like an underhook. You know what I mean? How do they score that? They should, uh, you know, when the guy's on the guard, if he's going for a submission, it should count for something. It's an offensive move. You know? I think so, but you know, the judges don't. <laughs> yes, very true. Now, sometimes if you're in the bottom, it just doesn't look good. Yeah. Next right after that. Uh, and as far as see Jason High and last season fight, just more lower to mid tier guys in the division. Uh, next fight that Sergio Pettis uh, beat Will Campuzano by unanimous decision. Uh, man, both these guys looked like natural or looked like flyweights fighting at bantamweight. Sergio Pettis is a younger brother of Anthony Pettis. His striking is on point. He has a very active guard game, um, which is contrary to what we're talking about, actually. <laughs> Uh, but his takedown defense is the thing that needs a lot of work. Otherwise, I think both guys should cut to 125. Sergio Perez, my personal opinion, champion in the making. This kid is only 20 years old, youngest fighter in the UFC. His striking's already really good. His ground game, his BJJ is solid. Only gonna get better, man. I I, always, I like what I see from Sergio. Just fight more lower to mid guys. He Will Camazano too, man. That guy's a tough guy to to fight. First fight in the UFC. That's a pretty tough fight. Um, but yeah, uh, both guys are more lower to mid guys of whatever division they choose. And finally, John Volante beat Cody Donovan by TKO in the second round. Cody Donovan's probably gonna get cut from the UFC. He has two losses in a row. He's not much of a prospect. Volante, oh man. The guy looks like his ceiling is like mid tier. He trains with good guys. Trains with like Chris Weidman, who's in his corner. He, you know, his striking's not bad. His wrestling isn't that bad. But, you know, the guy just. He, he can't seem to get past a certain level in his progress as an MMA fighter. Just more lower to mid tier guys of his. of light heavyweight. That'd be like Fabio Maldonado, Brian Gemmo, um. Who well, you know, I, I, there's such a thin division, man. So yeah, that's pretty much it for our post-fight analysis for UFC 167. If you have any comments, just leave them below. Got any final words, my man? Um, really, uh, great, great night of fights. You know, the main event was all of them were really good. Um, a little short, you know, first round, second round. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, what do you call this? Uh, GSP retiring. That's kind of a shocker. It was uh, yeah. all over the Facebook post, but uh, more power to him. Hope. Hope we see him in the future, and uh, would love to see a Johnny Hendricks rematch. And mm. uh, I guess that would be it. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even notice there's only like one, two, three, only four finishes in this uh, on this card. The rest of the fights were decision. Um, I liked most of the fights on here, though. So, uh, yeah. Good card, nonetheless. And, yeah, that's pretty much it for MMA for you. Thank you guys very much.